In this episode, it's all about the money. We're talking about creating effective banner ads for your clients. This is Better Radio Websites, the podcast for radio professionals who want to see their website generate more traffic and revenue. Each week, your host, Jim Sherwood, and his special guests give you time-tested tips and secret tricks to ensure your radio station dominates digital in your market. Here we go. Hi, it's Jim, and thanks a lot for tuning in to Better Radio Websites. Well, this week, we're talking about banner ads. Now, before we jump into actually creating the banner ads, there are all kinds of different ways and softwares that you could actually use to create these. Now, we prefer Photoshop. Photoshop may be either, one, too expensive, or two, too hard to learn for some folks. But there are all kinds of websites out there that you can actually jump in, upload the client logo and the message and that sort of thing, and actually create the banner ads within the browser, and then download them for use on your radio station website. Now, you can just do a Google search for free banner ad creation tools and get all kinds of different ways to do it. There's actually the Photoshop free editor within a browser, pixlr.com slash editor. We'll link to that in the show notes, but that is actually a Photoshop-like program within a browser. You can actually create the, the banner ad sizes, upload your content, and do all that kind of jazz within the browser. And it's free. So getting into creating banner ads. You know, banner ads are one of the best forms of marketing used in today's online world. All companies are using them in some form or another because they're affordable, they're measurable, and they're an effective way to increase brand awareness, much like our radio commercials. You know, every day we're taking client information and turning that into awesome radio campaigns. Well, we should put just as much effort into creating their banner ad creative. Radio ads build awareness, get people indoors. Banner ads build awareness, and get visitors to the client's digital doors, their websites. So much like it's your job to get people in their doors, it is your job to get people to click to their website from your radio station website. So here are some tips and general guidelines for designing effective banner ads. Stick to standard banner ad sizes. Now, research has shown that wider ad sizes tend to outperform their taller and less wide counterparts. Now, this may be due to the placement above the fold. You've probably seen these in website headers. They're easier to read from left to right because they're wider than they are tall rather than you know the stack text of the smaller ads that are more tall than wide. But here are some of the sizes that you should consider first, and I'll tell you why after I give them. Uh, 728 pixels wide by 90 pixels tall. That's called the leaderboard. There's also a 300 by 250 medium rectangle a 300 by 600 pixels tall, half page. And then the mobile banner ad size is typically 320 pixels wide by 50 pixels tall. Now, why adhere to the standard banner ad sizes? Well, if you have agency buys, most agencies will have one or more of these sizes already ready to go when they call you. You know, once you guys do the deal and they, they can just send you the size. If you have a weird size on your website, well, then they have to go and they have to create that. Or you have to recreate it. Or they may have to send you something that really doesn't get the client's message across. Or they just typically just say, no, we can't deal with that. It's going to cost too much because we have to hire a designer to read to do it and all that kind of other jazz. And so they may just pass you by. Or the buy may not be as much because you may have one size and not another. So keep that in mind to try to stick with the standard banner ad sizes. When you have your sizes all down and you're getting ready to create, maintain the essentials. Every banner ad needs three elements, branding for the client, message, and the encouragement to click on it. Now, the challenge is you don't have very much room to do all of these, but all three are essential. If you're including this in a radio schedule buy, which more than likely they are, they're buying a radio ad schedule, and then hopefully you're not bonusing and giving away the website, but they are also buying a banner ad schedule on your website. Be sure that the message in your banner ad is the same as the message in their radio ad. Now, obviously, you're not going to fit all of this copy into some very, very small space or whatever, but the encouragement to click and go to their website should still be approximately the same as their radio ad. Their radio ad is to get people in the door 
and the banner ad is to get people to their website. Are they doing a contest where you come in the store and you sign in to register, and then do they have an, an online registration component as well? All right, so you see, that's kind of the same message. Or they're having a huge sale, uh, that sort of thing. The message should be the same on both, their radio ad and their banner ad. Now, if they have multiple messages going at one time, maybe they have a, uh, a sign-up uh, for a contest and they're having a big grand opening sale with all of these different things, uh, do not include all of that on one ad, okay? Only one message per ad. If they have a few different messages, have them do a few different ads and rotate those because banner ads should not be lengthy rotation of messages. If you're going to use an animated GIF, for an example, that can be multiple slides on one banner ad, nobody's going to stick around and read all of that stuff. All right, start with a static ad first. If that doesn't get the message across, then try to talk them into multiple banner ads that rotate. That is very, very important because if you have an animated GIF, they're typically 5 to 20 times the file size of just a typical ad. And so those messages are going to be more difficult to download on mobile devices. And uh, a lot of browsers now are not actually showing the animated GIF. They're putting a small little play button over it. And you can click it to play it if you want to. Nobody wants to. All right. I promise you, nobody will sit and click on that. So be sure that you include only one message per ad. Be sure that you include a great call to action. Now, I know I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but it's worth mentioning again. The goal of the banner ad is to get a click. A good call to action is really the incentive to click. What is the user supposed to do next? What are they going to get whenever they do that? Do they sign up for an email list for a chance to win something? Do, are they going to get a special discount whenever they you know click on it and put their information in? Whenever you include a message, you know, like click here or learn more or it's really not a call to action. It's saying that this image is clickable. But really, if you can put a, a better call to action there, like click here to get 50% off of this, click here to save 80% off of that, then the visitor knows exactly why they should click there and it should be incentive to click there. All right, so that great call to action is very, very important. And add a sense of visual urgency as well. Contrasting bold colors. Web ads are really not supposed to be subtle. Some will include a countdown and or maybe a, a small little te text at the bottom saying that uh, only offer good until midnight tonight. I mean, it works. It works. All right, be sure that your ad design is consistent with the client's branding. It has to look the same as the client, like maybe pull some uh, details off of their website and make the ad kind of look like that. When a person clicks on a banner ad and a website comes up that looks totally nothing like what the feeling that they got before they clicked on the banner ad, then that conversion process is a little bit, you know, in their subcon subconscious, it's kind of skewed a little bit they didn't get what exactly what they were kind of expecting whenever they clicked on it. And that can make a difference in conversions. All right. So be sure that the ad design is consistent with the client's branding. You don't want them to have a blue logo and then go to a red website. All right. Include a button on your banner ad. Easy to follow instructions are vital to most customers. I mean, most people know that banner ads, the entire ad is meant to be clicked and the little bitty button that you put there is not the only place that you can click. You can click anywhere on the ad. But when you put a small button there, it really just pushes them over into, oh, there's a button. I need to click it. I must click it. It's a button. And so it doesn't have to be fancy either. Just, you know, a, a shop now, click here to win this. That sort of thing can go a long way into making that switch from viewer to conversion. There's a button there, but I have to click it. What's going to happen when I click the button? It's all subconscious. All right. So include a button on your banner ad. It's, it's weird that the buttons make a difference, but it does. Okay. Enough about buttons that you must click. Uh, choose your fonts wisely. The smaller the space, the more important your fonts are going to become. Make the most of the space provided with strong typefaces that are easy to read. Do not pack a bunch of content into this very small space with little bitty fonts. Nobody will read it. 
think of this banner ad kind of like a billboard on the highway. They say you only get, uh, what, five or six, seven seconds to read a billboard as you're driving down the highway. Banner ads should have the same amount of message. Do not stick a bunch of content into a small space just because you can fit tiny, small words on there. Go with a big headline, something that's bold, maybe a little unusual, colorful to grab the user's attention, and then stick a you know simple font for everything else. Never use more than two fonts in an ad, unless you're just really, really, oh, it's a weird client that has something special going on. Um, use two sizes or bold, one for the main text, another for the buttons and the call to action. Just make sure the entire thing is easily read. And you can do this by looking at the, the screen, turning away, looking back at the screen real quick, and then turning away real quick. And did you, you know, did you get the message? Ask some folks in the radio station there to check out your design before you actually present it to the client. All right. The client may love it, but they're sitting there and they're only focused on their ad in the review process. They're not focused on anything else. They're not looking for news headlines or anything like that while they're doing that. And so they're only focused on the ad and really their approval is the second thing you want. You want the ad to give them clicks. You want it to be effective for them as something that they can measure so they can buy from you next time. Their approval is really secondary. Giving them results is the ultimate payoff. Keep that in mind as well. I just, I didn't even have that in my notes. I just thought of that. Yeah, it's good, huh? Yeah, okay. All right, so uh, use imagery well and only when you need it. Choose relevant images, graphics, and photos to enhance your message. If you don't have photos from the client, Consider buying an affordable license to a stock photo service. So we've talked about photos in uh, other episodes here. Never, ever, 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 never, never, ever grab an image from a Google search. All right. If you or the client did not specifically take the photo, consider it just as off limits as including a licensed song in a radio ad. Would you put a Taylor Swift song in a client's donut commercial? The same copyright laws apply to images that you do not take yourself or the client did not take themselves. This is huge. And who will get popped with that? Not the client. You will get popped with that because you were the creator of the banner ad. Please keep this in mind. Also, save banner ads properly. Now, this is a huge one in a proper file format and a proper size this is very, very huge. Optimize your images for the smallest file size possible while still looking great. The target file size should be around 30K, hopefully less, but it, sh it should be really no more than that, depending on the size of the ad, of course. Keep in mind that animated GIFs can be very, very large. And really, that's not going to work out well for your client because like I said earlier, some browsers actually put a play button over the animated GIF. And so nobody wants that. Their message is not going to be seen. It, it's better to serve a static image. Be sure that the file format of your static image works uh, everywhere on the web. Uh, common file types for banner ads include JPEG and uh, PNG for static displays, GIF or GIF for animation. And there are some newer file types out there, SVG and WebP. They're becoming more widely accepted now. And gosh, the file sizes are just fractions of their JPEG and PNG and GIF counterparts. So look into those file formats as well. Also, link appropriately. If your client has a well thought out call to action on their banner ad, ensure that it links directly to that action item, not just their homepage. So if their banner ad says, sign up for our newsletter to receive 80% off your next so-and-so, be sure that the banner ad links directly to the place where they sign up, not their homepage, and then they should go find where to sign up because that extra step on the visitor's part of having to go to the homepage and then find where to sign up, that could be where the conversion process ends. They may not do that. Something may happen. So be sure that it links directly to the action item in the message if they have a message like that. All right, users will thank you for this. The client will get the conversion they're looking for. Everybody is happy and going on vacation. 
All right. So in conclusion, the banner ad, it's not dead yet. It's probably not going to go away anytime soon. But just like their radio counterparts, we need to do everything in our power to ensure that the ads are the most effective for the client. And that's getting those clicks out there. If you actually uh, have a banner ad schedule, be sure that your account reps are looking every so often to see how many clicks that client is getting. If they're not getting very many clicks, it may be time to review the creative because the creative is not giving them the clicks that they need. And whether or not the client is actually reviewing all of the stats on all the clicks and impressions and that sort of thing, if they're not getting clicks, let's review it. Let's try to do a, a much better job for them and give them creative that actually gives them clicks. So I hope this information is helpful to you. If it is, we do want to hear about it. Uh, hit us up at skyrocketradio.com. Have an awesome week online making your radio station website better. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to Better Radio Websites. Inspired by today's episode? Be sure you are subscribed and share this episode with a friend. Visit skyrocketradio.com forward slash podcasts for more episodes as well as show notes for this episode. Need help starting or making your station website better? Visit skyrocketradio.com.